All right, so with the power windows installed, I think the next step for us in this door is to go ahead and get the power lock unit set up. What we're gonna be using here is just a central locking unit. So this is the solenoid, and if you unlock one door, there's an internal switch that will automatically unlock the other door and then just the opposite when you go unlock it. Um, we've already done the passenger door, so we've got that all mocked up. We know exactly what needs to happen here. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and get going on the, on the driver door here. What we're gonna need to do though, is we've got to pull the, the glass out because this track right here in the window uh, is in the way of where we're going to be mounting the solenoid. Now the track is going to go back in but I just can't get in here and do any work. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the glass out. Uh, I'm going to pull this brace off of the motor and then we do have to modify the actual door mechanism, the latch mechanism to accept the new power lock. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out as well as the, the door handle. So that's really where, where we are for the next step. We're just going to go ahead and get this door re-disassembled here. We'll get the latch out and then we'll show you what we're doing to uh, get that modified. So with this guy out, now what we can do is figure out how we're going to modify this to, to work with our lock rod. It's, uh, there's a little bit of work involved here. Uh, but first things first, before we can go any further, we need to get this clean. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, soak this in my ultrasonic cleaner uh, just in some simple green, and that's going to help chew up all this dirt and old grease and stuff that's on here and get this thing a little bit nicer to work on as well as free up any of this stuff. It'll free up any of the mechanism to make sure everything's working smoothly. Once we've got it clean, then we'll, we'll bring you back and show you what we're going to do to, to modify this area here. Alrighty. So here is our latch mechanism. And I went ahead and cleaned this up. I just ran it through my ultrasonic cleaner uh, for about 40 minutes total. It's not completely clean. You can still see some, some rust on here. And there's some really baked in crud here. <clears throat> And that we're not going to worry about right now. This is clean enough for the next step. What we'll do after everything is modified and uh, we pull the car apart to, for paint, then I'll go ahead and finish cleaning this up. But right now, my lock mechanism is working real smooth and the door latch mechanism is working nice and smooth. So really we're ready to move on with the, the next step. What we need to do here is this is the outside of the latch mechanism. This is where the door handle is actually gonna attach. And the way this works is this is the actual door lock. So when you turn the key in the handle, that will lock it and unlock it. There is a uh, secondary lock mechanism that works here. This is the uh, actual door pull. So from the inside, you'd have your rod hooked up to that and that's what causes the door to open, but then if you push the handle backwards, it'll engage this pin and that will lock the door. So what we need to do here is we need to figure out how to attach a, an actual pull rod to this arm here to lock and unlock the door with the solenoid. <clears throat> now after looking at the mechanism here, this is going to be a little hard to see, but right down in here, there's a, an arm that attaches to the lock mechanism. You can see that move. And that is actually this, this mechanism here that's attached to the, to the door handle. So what we want to be able to do here is attach to that. I tried to attach it to this guy here, but because it moves, it, it'll interfere with the the actual uh, rod here. So what I found easiest and most efficient is to attach it to this this little arm here. And what we'll do, if I flip this around, is the arm 
it actually is bent under and it's attached to this guy right here. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna drill and cut a slot in this protective cover right here, which is just a dust shield, keeps dirt and moisture off of the mechanism. We're gonna cut a slot in that right there, which will then locate this arm. And then we're gonna drill a hole in the arm, which will allow us to attach our lock rod here. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna mark the position of the arm and there's no, no accuracy here. We just need to know where the arm stops. And so that'll be here when it's in the lock position. And then it'll be there when it's in the unlock position. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a slot right here. And that's going to allow this lock rod to operate. In order to cut this, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna drill a series of holes along this line as close together as I can. And then I'll take my Dremel tool and I'll trim that out so it's nice and, nice and smooth and nice and straight. And then we can uh, move on and drill a hole in the actual locking arm. So now what we need to do with this working is we need to drill a hole in this arm right here. You can see if I activate the mechanism, that arm moving up and down. So I need to drill a hole in that because that's what this rod is gonna actually hook into. What I found with the last one that I did is that the metal that they used here is extremely hard and a standard drill bit wouldn't, wouldn't cut through it. So what I ended up doing here is I have a set of carbide drill bits. Using this drill bit on my Dremel tool, I'm able to come in and just make it through that material. And then we'll take our diamond, our diamond grinding bit from the Dremel and we'll go in and we'll finish it off. So that's how we're gonna drill this hole. Well, here we are. So we've got our hole drilled in this. You can just see it right down and through here. And so now I know that my rod's gonna fit and I can lock and unlock the door. So the next thing we're gonna do here is I do need to actually put a, a bend in the end of this uh, to, in order to engage that hole. So we're just gonna put a little, little Z bend in there. So now it'll fully engage the lock when it's in the lock position and yet still has enough movement to unlock it. So here's my lock rod that's moving and we'll make some minor tweaks here and there as we get closer to finished. But for now, that's working perfect. The next thing we have to do, if I flip this around, as the rod moves back and forth, you can see that there's nothing holding this in place. And the other end will be connected to our, our solenoid. And because it's only connected to the solenoid, this is free to move around. And, and I noticed with the last one that it kind of 
causes things to jump around and bind. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a little stop that's going to bolt on here and that's going to hold this lock rod down in the corner so it isn't allowed to, to move around. And that's just simply done with some, some thin sheet metal. All right, so here's our little sheet metal tab here that's going to hold this in place. And if I lay this on here, you'll notice I have it bent at a, about a 45 degree angle here. And what that'll do is that'll slide down and actually enclose this lock rod. So if I hold this in place, the rod's not free to wiggle around, but can still move up and down at ease. So now all we have to do is attach that to this lock mechanism. And to do that, I'm just gonna drill a couple holes. I know that I can put a screw here and put a screw here. And there we have it. So now we have a guide for our lock rod that's gonna keep this lock rod in place. And there's plenty of movement here to activate it. Well, all right, so there we have it. We've got our latch mechanism all modified for this lock rod, something it was never designed for. And it's working exactly as we want it to. So I can lock and unlock and it's nice and smooth with no no hitches or no hesitation. And as it sits right now, this latch is completely dry. There's no lubrication in here. And I'm gonna do all the rest of my setup work like this. And after we've got everything functioning smoothly, then we'll go ahead and add some, some grease. Uh, I like to do it that way because if everything works when it's perfectly dry, we know it's gonna work when it's lubricated. And really, the lubrication we put on there is just to keep things from wearing out. You don't want to use the lubrication as a, as a crutch to make things function because once that dries up and it will dry up and go away eventually, then this could stop working. So now that we've got this modified, I think that's where we're going to cut it off for today. Um, I think the next one, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead and get the servo mounted up. We'll show you how to make a bracket for that. And with the servo mounted in the door, then we just have to figure out how to connect the linkage between the servo and the door lock mechanism.